Welcome to another episode of Lineman Talk. Today we're going to talk about some things that we've already covered once or twice. Now I'll keep this pretty short, but we've brought a power quality analyzer. We have a heat gun and we have the Super Beast. And the Super Beast can stab into a meter socket or like I have it, we use the meter base adapter. And down here in the bottom of the panel, you can see where I have the Super Beast connected. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make sure that we have our safety glasses. The hard hat is part of our uniform and then we're gonna put on our rubber gloves. Let's energize the panel. We have two 120 volt light bulbs. One's on leg one, one's on leg two. Right now the currents are balanced and the voltages are balanced. We'll go ahead and operate the Super Beast. If you saw that Super Beast 126, 114, we know that we have a good neutral, but because of the way the board is supplied with, with a cord, and that cord runs back to another plug, there's a voltage drop across that cord. So we have to deal with that. When we get a resistive neutral, we will see this dramatic change, high on one leg, low on the other. What you saw here is voltage drop on the supply. Here is the and that heat gun. That heat gun is drawing 12 amps. You can see our voltage, 124, 119. So when I talk about trying to hunt this stuff down, the number one thing, the number one thing is you must have current. If you don't have current, you go and you have a voltage complaint, you pull the meter, lay it on the ground, and you can guarantee that there's no current flow on a hot leg or the neutral, just leave the voltmeter in the truck. You're not gonna find anything. You must force current to stress the joints, the hot joints, the resistive connections. The current will stress those, affect the voltage, and allow you to find them. If you have no current, you will never find them. Unless it's obvious and it's burnt to, and you can see it with your eyes, you're never gonna find it with a voltmeter. Let's bring the Super Beast on with a normal, good neutral. One twenty-six and one fourteen, and I told you that's the voltage drop on the cord. Now, what we'll do is create a resistive neutral. I have a, a resistor on the side of the board right here and it will act like a bad connection. So we'll bring that into play. Now I'm going to force this neutral current to go through this resistor and back to the load. So let's bring the Super Beast on with what I consider a small resistive connection. A low resistance. It's not a terrible. This would cause flickering lights in a house. <laughs> 
149 on one leg. Ninety two on the other leg. Okay, now we'll start with the heat gun and we'll use the heat gun and that resistive connection. It's a twelve amps causing the unbalance, one hundred and ten volt load. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the heat gun on and you're gonna watch this voltage change because we have a resistive neutral. 138, 105, 12 amps. You saw the 12 amps and the spread. We put more current, we get a wider spread and the connector hasn't changed, the resistance uh, of the bad connection has not changed. The current passing through it is affecting this voltage. Now, let's take the Super Beast and the heat gun and parallel them. Well, should be about 32 amps on the neutral. One fifty nine and eighty one. So imagine you're the customer inside your house and he's usually watching his refrigerator come on or his white blow dryer and you'll see that. But here we are stressing these connections with the heat gun at 12 amps and the super beast at 20. Then when we add them together, we can make it. What I tell you, one fifty and 90, 150 and 90. So there's a dramatic difference and it's all about current flow. So now we're gonna restore this resistive connection. And because it'll have such a dramatic effect, I'm going to open the neutral with the uh, light bulbs only. With the light bulbs only, I'm gonna open the neutral. So let's turn one light bulb off. And the only load we have in this whole panel is one 40 watt light bulb. And right now the neutral is good and our voltages are balanced 122, 122. Now I'm gonna go open the neutral. One bulb. Here's where I open my neutral, right here and I stop this neutral current from going back at the 120 volt level. Now we're truly applying the light bulb across the 240 and the resistance of the light bulb determines where he falls in that 240. So you see 122, 122, the only load is the light bulb. Open neutral. Only load one 40 watt light bulb. The loaded leg falls to six. The unloaded leg goes to 240. So when we have an open neutral at someone's house, they're damaging equipment. And usually we get the opportunity to get there and investigate it while the neutral is deteriorating. It's not very often that we go and the neutral is completely broken. Uh, when that happens, it's because somebody dug through the cable, it finally blew out. There's a couple different things that can cause that, but usually when we have an HTAP connector or a pin terminal, some type of connection that we own, we'll watch it deteriorate slowly. In a customer's panel, we see the same thing. When we have a neutral lug on a bus bar, they'll deteriorate slowly and we'll watch the customer complain or hear the customer complain. Uh, my lights are flickering and they're getting worse and they're getting worse. And you can start to correlate this to 120 volt loads. I'm gonna turn on two light bulbs that are served in series 
240 volts. So the only load is these two light bulbs. They're in series and we have no neutral involved. The neutral is not involved at all. I'm gonna open the neutral. You do not see any difference in these light bulbs because the currents are balanced on the 240 volts. Now, if I was to unscrew one of these light bulbs, you'd see something that looked like what we saw earlier. Now, let me restore this neutral. We're gonna go ahead and bring the Super Beast on. And this is one of the things that I like about the Super Beast is that we can move load from one side, one hot leg to the other hot leg. And we're actually testing the hot legs also. Uh, so if you have a voltage complaint of flickering lights, yes, your neutral might be involved, but you could have a problem on the hot leg also. Now, I like to use the meter socket and clamp down in the bottom of the disconnect panel down here. That way I'm stressing everything back to the utility. When I do the meter socket only, take this, stab it in here. I serve no loads past here. I only operate the Super Beast from here up. And if the customer has a condition down here, bad breaker, bad neutral bus, broken wire, the Super Beast in the meter socket will never ever show that up. You'll never see it because it's beyond. You're measuring the neutral in the meter base and not down in here. So when I shoot these, I take the Super Beast or my external load heat gun and I clip it on down here so that I can stress all the parts back to the utility. I'm testing the main breaker, these lugs, the meter socket, connections at the, all the way back to the transformer when I connect down here. When we put the Super Beast in the meter socket, none of this is tested. None of this is stressed. And if you have a condition caused by a deteriorating part, it'll never reveal itself. <clears throat> so two bulbs at 240. I'm gonna go ahead and bring these 220 volt bulbs on. So leg one, leg two, these two bulbs are at 240 volts. Now we'll bring in a resistive neutral. Very low current. The only current we have is what one 40 watt light bulb can do. Now let's turn off one breaker. 122, 122. We're going through a baby resistor. Very little change. We have load at 240. Imagine this is your oven, your uh, furnace, your heater, your electric heater, your air conditioner, for most of the air conditioner that uses 240 volts. The neutral can be open and not affect those devices. The neutral affects 120 volt loads. If you're gonna troubleshoot it, you have to have currents. So we've got one light bulb, this one's off. These two are served by 240 volts. I'm going to restore the neutral at the bad connection and I'm gonna open the neutral. You'll watch this light bulb go to crap. The voltage will flip these two light bulbs will stay on because those two light bulbs are running at 240 volts. Now I've been working at this for years and years and years. So when I talk about how neutrals are affected, I've been to hundreds of these calls and with a good voltmeter, 
and a good understanding of how the neutral works and how it can affect our customer, then we, we've covered some of the troubleshooting methods using a voltmeter. Here, we're talking about how the voltages are affected by current. No current? Send somebody else on the call. You're not going to find it. What else do we want to cover? So hopefully we'll get a chance to review this with some crews soon and uh, probably talk about some troubleshooting techniques. But I wanted to keep this short. Talk about the Super V's. Talk about a handy heat gun that you can doesn't take up a lot of room on the truck. And as long as you can clip on or use the meter socket if you have to, uh, you, these devices will supply load, will supply current that flows on the neutral. And that is what it takes to hunt this stuff down. Thanks for your time. I hope you got something out of it. I'll see you soon.